How's it going everyone? I'm Jason with the Review Suite. iOS 14 is here. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some apps, widgets, and shortcuts that I use on my iPhone SE 2. So starting on the first page, I have a smart stack for music, podcast, that sort of thing, my calendar, weather. So I can just jump right in to see what my day is going to look like and just crank up some music to get my day started. Below that, I have the fitness widget. Even though I have a uh, Apple Watch and I can see that information right there, I still like to have it on my home screen so I can just continue to stay motivated throughout the day to reach my fitness goals. As far as apps, I like to keep all of them in alphabetical order. I use a lot of stock Apple apps like the calculator and mail. But beyond that, of course, I have Instagram installed. If you're not following the review suite over on Instagram, make sure you do. The handle will be at the top right. Next, I have Outlook. I use Outlook for my full-time job. I spend a lot of time on Reddit and hopefully Reddit will go ahead and push out some widgets of their own because even though I like Apollo, you still have to pay for some premium features. And I mean, it doesn't cost a lot for uh, Apollo, their pro features, but I still want to wait and see just how the official Reddit developers handle widgets. Down to the bottom right, I have the official YouTube Studio app installed. Nine times out of 10, when I am responding to you guys on the channel, I'm usually responding through the Studio app. It's just quick and easy. It just strips down a lot of the noise and distractions that you would normally get in the official YouTube app. So definitely, if you are a creator, install the YouTube Studio application. In the dock, I have the camera app, Messenger, Music, and of course, SoundHound. You'll notice I have a lot of music-related applications installed on my phone, and that's pretty much the primary reason why I still use iPhone. Like I have so much music that I purchased through iTunes over the years. I, I like I just refuse to switch to anything else. Not saying that there's anything wrong with Android, but for music, like I am a music centric kind of person when it comes to my mobile device. The second page is dedicated to shortcuts. Now I use shortcuts a lot and they really save me a lot of time. For example, if I need to text my wife, I can just press that button and it brings up the uh, text widget and I can just text her just like that. I have Shazam installed. If I hear some dope music playing in the background when I'm watching TV, I can just tag it and have it just like that. I have a log water shortcut. If I wanna get the news real quick, there's NPR. If I need to hard shut off Wi-Fi for any reason, I have a button for that and also a button to turn it back on. Now the silence during a meeting shortcut is great because as you guys know or are probably experiencing yourself, we're doing a lot of virtual work and I just need to shut everything off real quick. I can do that right from shortcuts. And finally, the convert to PDF shortcut is mostly used in Safari. If I'm browsing and I need to convert a website into a PDF for research purposes, I can do it with just a touch. It's that simple. At the bottom, I have the clock app, Gmail, the Sony Imaging Edge application, and Ring. Now what's awesome about the Imaging Edge app is that I can remote control my Sony a6400. If you have a Sony camera and you don't have this application, I highly recommend you install it. It's a really helpful app if you are filming by yourself or if you need to prop your camera up in a hard to reach place. So I highly recommend the Imaging Edge app. Now on this last page is just a random assortment of applications. Since iOS 14 has added the app library, I have drastically reduced the number of folders that I have um, on my screens here. So as you can see, I only have one folder here, which is the entertainment folder. And here lives Disney Plus, HBO, Hulu, Netflix, and my one game that I have installed. So oldie but a goodie is called Tower Defense. Beyond that, just your typical consumer slash shopping slash entertainment, just a whole mix of things. So Amazon, of course, gotta have the app store installed. Another music application, Bandcamp. I buy 
a lot of my music for listening and for my YouTube videos on Bandcamp because there are a lot of dope artists who are just trying to get their music out there and I try to support them uh, whenever I can. Discord, of course. DJ2 is awesome whenever I want to just chop up some tracks and just listen to stuff at different beats per minute. Fitman Cook is what I use for uh, food recipes, for meal prep. I think this is a paid app, but it's totally worth it. I have Google Maps installed. I don't use it often locally unless I'm going to a place I've never been. It's, it's pretty handy when Apple Maps don't want to act right. <laughs> of course, I have iTunes installed. I have been an iTunes user for probably 11 years. Actually, before I even own an iPhone or an iPod, I use iTunes because in the beginning with iTunes, like I just really liked how iTunes organized my music. I started with all of my CDs growing up, just importing those and just, you know, gradually moving them over to different hard drives and different computer systems. So yeah, a, a lot of my music experience is through iTunes. And if you go back and look through my catalog, you'll just see all the stuff that I purchased. I mean, there's really no telling how much music I have purchased through iTunes. So gotta have iTunes, of course. Lose It is the fitness slash calorie counting app that I use. I'm not gonna open that because I don't want y'all in my business <laughs> seeing how much I eat and all this other stuff. But, but yeah, uh, there's also a paid version of Lose It and uh, it's worth it. The Notes app. Now I use the stock Notes app for all of my uh, work slash YouTube slash ideas. I just use all of it here. And with iPad OS 14, I use it more on my iPad Pro now, but if I ever get an idea, if I need to jot something down, I just open it up in notes and get it going. Photos, reminders, I think you guys know what that's about. Settings, of course. Shortcuts, SoundCloud. Now SoundCloud is another music application. Again, mostly for independent artists. There's the watch app. If you have an Apple watch, of course, you have to have the watch app installed in order for your watch to function. YouTube. We went through the entertainment app and uh, that's pretty much it. These last two applications I have installed is Test Flight. And uh, with, through Test Flight, I have Widgie installed. So Widgie is an application designed for you to design your own custom widgets. I haven't gotten into it just yet. I just learned about this application here recently. I'll probably start customizing some widgets here of my own pretty soon. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Leave a comment down below and let us know what widgets you are using in your iPhone. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.